Huh? Yeah. She said she ain't coming because it's a tornado. So I just watch online. Y'all. Y'all, I am here. Lord knows I hate driving in the rain. You know I'm going to have to do about two going home. Huh? Our scripture for this evening comes from Philippians chapter 3, verse 13 and 14. Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. The one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Father God, again, we come to say thank you for being God. We thank you that you are holy, you are righteous, you are merciful, you are gracious. You are God, Jehovah, God, your, uh, Uriah. We thank you, your provider. You are everything, Lord God. Yes. And we just thank you for still claiming us as your children. Thank you for all your promises that you have promised toward us, Lord. You have kept them all. And we just thank you for your word. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. Yes. We do acknowledge that we have sinned sometime this day, Lord God, either consciously or unconsciously. But we just thank you for your mercy and grace, Lord God, and that you still claim us as your children. Yes. Now we ask that you would bless the uh, Bible study this evening, Lord God. Bless Pastor Haynes, bless your word. Help us to open up our hearts and our minds, Lord God, and help us to learn something new from your word that we will be stronger Christians and more knowledgeable of your will and how you want us to live, Lord God. Help us not to leave this lesson tonight here at this church, but to take it with us and to apply it to our everyday living, Lord God. And you want us to be witnesses to those who are lost, Lord God. We don't have to preach to them, Lord God, but just tell them the simple gospel that you love the world so much that you sent your only son, Jesus, into the world to die for their sins. Yes. And if they believe that Jesus is your son, then they can have life and have it everlasting. Lord, we thank you for our church, and we just thank you for last Sunday service, and now we're lifting up this coming Sunday service, Lord God. We pray for an extraordinary service on Sunday. Use Pastor Haynes in an extraordinary way. Bless his um, uh, sermon on Sunday, Lord God. Bless our associate ministers, the choir members, the musicians, the ushers, the deacons, and keep us safe in the place of worship on Sunday, Lord God. We do lift up our Sunday school ministry, Lord God, and all the teachers and all the students, Lord God. Help us to prepare to teach your word on Sunday and help our students, Lord God, to grasp and understand your word. Yes. But most of all, help us as teachers and students, Lord, to live your word. Yes. Because we, we come here every Sunday and teaching and, and learn the word. If we don't apply it to everyday living, then it's all in vain. Yes. Now we lift up that man, woman, boy, and girl tonight that's not saved. Holy Spirit, touch them and convict them and help them to see they need you in their lives, Lord God. Now we lift up the sick tonight and pray for comfort, pray for, pray for strength, pray for healing, and 
Bless your doctors, nurses, medicines, and caretakers tonight, glory to God. Then you got some children that are bereaved of loved ones, Lord, and asking for your comfort. Help them through this dark period in their lives, Lord God. And now we lift up all churches that are open in your name. Every man, woman, boy, and girl, you're called to preach, to pastor, to minister, to evangelist. Bless them and bless their efforts, Lord God. And we love you and we thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for gathering us here again tonight. Thank you for allowing us to make it one more week. Yes, Lord. Yes. Father, I just want to thank you for just being a great Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for just being who you are. Yes. Allowing us to just accept your word and to live your word, Father. Yes. We thank you, even though we are not worthy. Yes. We're not even worthy of your great crumbs on the table, Father. Yes. But with you, Father, everything is possible. Yes. I thank you, Lord, for letting us gather here tonight. I thank you for letting us make it here safely. Yes. I thank you for allowing us to have the transportation to make it here safely. Yes. Plenty of times I can think back, Father, when I said I just need a car, Lord. And now I have it, Father. I just thank you in advance, Lord, yes. for what you will do. Thank you for what you have done. Yes, Lord. I thank you, Father, for my strength and health. Mm -hmm. I thank you for just being able to stand up in my right mind, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you for guiding me back to you, Father. I ask you, Father, for a special anointing in my heart, Father, to stay aligned with your word, Father. Yes. Help me to accept your word and learn your word, Father, dissect your word, Father. Yes. And to just walk it, Lord. I ask you day to day, it is hard, Father, by myself. But I ask you, Father, to come in so that I'm able to do it. I ask you, Father, to come closer to my family. Yes. Help me to stay hungry for your word, Lord. Yes, Lord. Help me to understand your word, Father. Yes. I ask you, Father, to just keep being you and just to keep using me, Lord. Yes, Lord. I thank you for Bethany. I thank you for my Bethany family, Lord. I thank you for the circle you have placed around me, Lord. Yes. I ask you to remove any and everyone that is with me or that is by me, Father, that is not for you, Lord. Yes. I ask you, Father, to just keep my circle close, Lord. When I'm weak, Father, help lift me. I ask you, Father, to bless each and every last one of us here tonight. Yes. You know what we are in need of, Father. I ask you to bless the ones that are on the way that have not arrived yet, Father, and yes. keep them in safe ways, Father. I ask you, Father, to bless the sick and shut in tonight, just to let them know, Father, that with breath in their body, you're able, Father. Yes. I ask you, Lord, to bless this lesson tonight. Yes. That we're able to understand, Father, and keep it in our hearts. Yes. I ask you, Father, to just guide us this afternoon, Lord, just to guide us safely home and to guide us back Sunday as we hear your word, Father. Yes, Lord. I ask you to bless Pastor Haynes and the message you have given to him, Lord. Yes, Lord. And I ask you for each and every one of us to receive it in our ways, Lord. Yes. I ask these things in your son, Jesus Christ's name, I pray. Amen. 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 For another day. I thank you for just giving us a page of protection around us, my Heavenly Father, all day today, that we were able to come into your house one more time. I thank you for just being on the throne and still being in control of this world, my Heavenly Father. I thank you for just being who you are, my yes, Heavenly Lord. Father. I thank you for sending your Son to Calvary, my Heavenly Father, to die for our sins, my Heavenly Father. Because you didn't have to do it, but you thought enough of each and every one of us, my Heavenly Father, to send your Son. And we just thank you for that. We just thank you for your grace and your mercy, my Heavenly Father. We thank you for that unconditional love that you keep blessing us with each and every day, my Heavenly Father. We thank you for just Bethany, my Heavenly Father. We know that you have something in store for Bethany. And we thank you, my Heavenly Father, that you're trying to take us into the church that you would have us to be, my Heavenly Father. I ask you to look down on the Watson family tonight, my Heavenly Father, as they deal with the bereavement of their mother, my Heavenly Father. Touch that family right now. Give them strength, my Heavenly Father. Give them comfort, my Heavenly Father. Yes. Just remind them that you're still on the throne. And if they look towards you, my Heavenly Father, you can be a comforter for them, my Heavenly Father. My Heavenly Father, I just thank you for just being who you are. And thank you for what you're doing, my Heavenly Father. I know that there are seasons that we each are going through, my Heavenly Father, and as, as we just keep pushing through, my Heavenly Father, you will fight all those battles and all those worry and those anxiety and bring us through, and we just thank you for that, my Heavenly Father. Touch each and every one of us in your circle, my Heavenly Father. You know what we're in need of, my Heavenly Father. And if it's your will, my Heavenly Father, make it be so, my Heavenly Father. Touch our homes, my Heavenly yes, Father. Lord. Touch each member of our homes, my Heavenly yes. Father. 
give them strength, give them guidance, and give them wisdom right in this home. Just make it a home of love and peace and communication, my Heavenly Father, because without communication, they will be lost. And I just thank you, my Heavenly Father. Just pour in a word tonight to us, my Heavenly Father. Not only that we hear it, my Heavenly Father, that we actually live it, my Heavenly Father. I just praise you right now for what you're going to do and what you've already done, my yes. Heavenly Father. Because you don't have to do it, but you keep thinking of us each and every day and you keep doing it. And we just thank you for it in advance. Amen. Amen. I just want to pray. Good evening. 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 Good Oh, if nobody else come, I'm going to pray for you, Jess. <laughs> How's everybody doing? Great. Right. Alive and well. Is week going all right so far? Yes, sir. Yes, yes it is. Great. It's so great. That's good. That's good. How are you doing? Oh, it's been good for you, man. <laughs> I got nothing but some praise. Brag on me. You make me. Come on. Whoop me. Come on. Let me see a lemon day. He woke up more than once this morning. Good. <laughs> 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 so much he loves me. He wakes me up more than one time. <laughs> Privileges of seeing seven. Oh, me. We know God creates each one of us. He is the creator of all things, which means He is also the creator of all our destinies. But have you ever thought about how does God create things? So He just waves His mighty hand, or does He? dream about something, or then it automatically comes into being. The Bible tells us very plainly how he creates. So what? Speak. He speaks. Speak. Where you get that from? He spoke it in the Bible, didn't he? <laughs> Let there be told. Boy, y'all shocked me. They, they answered it today, too. Old Mary Smith answered it this morning. And they go, oh, the one I got it. That don't surprise me, you see. Clinton was going to say it, but you stole this thing. <laughs> Look at Genesis chapter 1, verse 3. Genesis chapter 1, verse 3. That's the first book in the Bible. <laughs> she said, mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and God let there be light, and there was light. And God said, God said, He spoke light. Look at uh, verse 24. And God said, Let the land produce living creatures according to the kind, to their kind, the livestock, the creatures that move along the ground, and the wild animals which according to its kind. And God said, I don't want y'all to think I made it up. Verse 26. That's where I'm going to get. And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air, and over the cow, and over all the earth, and over creeping thing that creepeth up on the earth. And God said, and God said, so everything God created, he spoke it, 
into existence. What do you think about that, Chess? What do you think of the ramifications of that? I'm God speaking and it coming to fruition? Is that what you're talking about? Or are you talking about? I'm just like in general. I mean, look, look at John chapter 1. We gonna sit top. You gonna talk. You gonna talk. Tonight you gonna be talking, girl. This is your night. When I say your night, I'm talking about y'all night. Ain't hey, before y'all, so I'm sure we have me a good time. John chapter one, verse one, two, and three. Everybody in the red except who? Don't even try it. <laughs> oh, yeah, look at that. <laughs> Miss Camera Lee, I think she don't have to read. <laughs> I'm working, sir. Thank you. Well, you work, work your mouth when you read that, that <laughs> passage. <laughs> okay, let me read it. I'm sorry. She's kind of slow, but we're going to wait on how much she okay. takes. Okay, hold on. Let me get it. Just for you tonight. And in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was was God. And and he was with God in the beginning, though through him all things were made, and without him nothing is made. Keep talking, keep talking. In him was life. And that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Read verse 14. The word, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory and the glory, wait a minute, and the glory of the one and only Son, who has come from the Father full of grace and truth. So everything that happens, happens because God, everything created, is created because God spoke it. Mm -hmm. And then he said, in the beginning, that's what we're talking about, that's what he says, in the beginning, Genesis, that's what he read, right? In the beginning was the word. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. The what? The word. Mm -hmm. He said everything that was created was created by God speaking it. But John says, in the beginning was the, the word. word. You see the similarity? Mm -hmm. Identical. I got a question for you. Everything, I got some questions for you. <laughs> <laughs> Everything that was created was created by his speaking it. Mm -hmm. And then John has nerve enough to say, mm -hmm. in the beginning was the word. And the word became flesh. So he says, the word was spoken. Mm -hmm. But he talks about the word separate from himself. He says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. So it was separate. But then he says, but the word and he are the same. And the word was God. God. Wow, that's deep. What that mean? He says, they were separate. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God. And says, then it says, the word was God. Mm -hmm. Then he says, all things were made by him. What? All things were created by him. What him? The word. Mm -hmm. The word. You said that. All things were created by his word. He said, not only was all things made by his word, but there wasn't anything made that was made. Who is this word? Jesus. Jesus. Well, if you got any doubt, you go down to first. 14 and he says and the word was made flesh the word was personified the word was made where we could recognize it and he dwelt among us he lived in on this earth mm -hmm. and, and we beheld his glory. glory the glory as of the only my look at all the clues up in there <laughs> the only begotten of the Father. In other words, the Word was Jesus, mm -hmm. God's only begotten Son. 
but he was the word made flesh. He was the word that was with God, but he was the word that was God. You can't separate them. And yet they separated. But the word, God uses the word. When God wants to create something, he speaks the word. Now what's your question? Because I'm going to ask mine. <laughs> so the light in Genesis and the light in John is the same light, but in a different form. Right. Okay, let's read that again. That's verse three. What? No, it's not. That's verse three. <laughs> no, no, yeah. So what does verse three he, say? What does verse three say? It's verse four. Wait. What does verse three say? Through him all things were made, and without him nothing was made that had been made. Okay. Keep four. reading. Four is in him was life. And that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome. Read verse three again. Through him all things were all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. Okay, him, the word, made everything. Nothing was made without it. Then read verse four. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. Okay, he says that not only did the word create everything, he said the word was life. Hmm. Was life. Y'all got that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everything was created by him, him being the word. He said, but the word is life. The word has life of itself. The word is alive. He told you that. He told you that in Hebrew. The word is alive. And sharper than any two-edged sword. He told you that. The word's alive. It's alive. It's alive. And he says, not only it is alive, but the life of the word does what? Huh? I think what he said in verse 4. The light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness. This in the darkness has not overcome it. Read verse 4. Which one? Verse 4. 4. He is, <laughs> in him was life. And the life was the light of all mankind. In him, I say he's life. We all talk about that. Yeah. But she said the life was the light. Y'all feel? Mm -hmm. The word is alive. The word is alive. So pray the Lord, you don't have to pray. Now you're talking about somebody living in darkness. You got me? <laughs> he said, so in him was light, and the light was light. Read verse 4 again. She don't like doing it again. <laughs> I'll be trying to show y'all something. See, a lot of times y'all don't get what it's saying because y'all don't read it enough. If you read a, a verse long enough, as many times, you, <laughs> it'll say something to you that you haven't heard said before. <laughs> oh, we had a lesson. We we teaching a lesson. We had a whole lesson going on. You'd have missed the whole lesson. John, John 1. John 1. John 1. John 1. Now, what were your questions? <laughs> <laughs> Not what you're saying. Is the light in Genesis the same as the light in John? Because yeah. you're saying he's spoke. Now she just read that sucker. How many no, 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 no. No, I know. No, 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 no. I, I, well, <laughs> how many times did she read it? <laughs> now I'm going to ask you. Now what was your question? Nothing. <laughs> Why you won't say nothing? No, because no, I just said. She, got, um, she said she got it. I got you. I got it. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. In him is life. And his life is the light. light 
of the world. The meat. The light shining in what? Darkness. Darkness. In the beginning, everything was dark. And when everything was dark, God spoke. spoke. What did he speak? Light. light. The word. The word was life. He spoke light. But the life is light. Let there be Itself. See, if I'd have to, you say, well, we don't, we don't be that. <laughs> fuss with the Bible, don't fuss with me. <laughs> fuss with the Bible, don't fuss with me. Y'all feel me? Yes, sir. But, no, no. <laughs> don't, don't worry, don't worry, I'm going to get you. I'm gonna get you. <laughs> See, you, you don't know you're helping yourself by asking me, because I'm going to ask you. <laughs> so what we're going to do with that, that thing about Speaking, speaking. God spoke the world into Exist. creation. Mm -hmm. So what did I say about us? Our tongue is powerful. What? Our tongue is powerful. Our tongue is powerful. You think so? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think so. I think so. The tongue, tongue is the most powerful thing. Me. Oh, you didn't say nothing that till that boy kissed you and gave you some you thought it was powerful. I ain't talking about that kind of power. I'm not talking about that kind of power. <laughs> if the life is in us. Life is in you? Yeah. You told me that. John, <laughs> verse four. <laughs> it's in, in the beginning. You heard in the beginning. You're talking about God. Let's go. So you God? No. Yeah. yeah. But he dwells in me. He said, like all mankind. And he said, we are like my, like him. So you're telling me that just like God created by speaking, you create by speaking. Yeah. I believe that. He spoke me here. You create the outcome of what happens when you verbally say things. So whatever you say not, verbally is going to happen. No, if it's, the, not, in God's if it's will. not in God's will, it's not going to happen. Oh, but I ain't talking about God's will. <laughs> no, but this is what you're saying. I ain't seen God's will. No way, none of no verses. Uh, no, 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 but this is what you're saying. Like, no, I'm, only, I'm trying to get some you understanding. Saying, you're saying God spoke. It says, in happened. the beginning, uh -huh. God uh -huh. Uh -huh. said, uh -huh. he spoke, let there be. John said, in the beginning was the word. Uh -huh. I ain't seen nothing about no will. He says, in the beginning was the Word, mm -hmm. and the Word was with yeah. God, mm -hmm. two, okay. but one, because he said the Word was God. I don't see nothing about no will. Mm -hmm. All things were made by him. Him who? God. Him, the Word. Oh, well, Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> See, I lost my quick. <laughs> <laughs> See, you got to keep it straight. If you, don't, if you don't keep it straight, you're going to mess up. Okay. All things made by Him. And without Him was not anything made that was made. Mm -hmm. In Him was light. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And his life, that life, was the light, light of men. Because the light shined in the darkness. And the darkness, now see, comprehend it, mess y'all up. He ain't saying the darkness couldn't see it, because you can see a little light in the dark. The darkness couldn't beat it. The darkness couldn't defeat it. The darkness couldn't whip the light. The light was so strong, it all, the, that light always defeats darkness. Now, where in there did you see Will? Man? No, you didn't say Will. She said Will. God's Will. My question. So, when you speak, 
that your speaking have the same power with God speaking. Yes, I ain't backing down. <laughs> I said, girl, if you're gonna be wrong, be wrong. <laughs> I, I remember something about you got the something to move the mountain, the faith or something, right? I can't remember. I mean, some people say, well, you got to be careful what you say because your word can curse you or bless you. Mm -hmm. So if you speak blessing on your life, you're blessed. Is that true? To a certain extent. Whoa, 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 whoa. Which words you said? Certain extent. <laughs> Which is short? Tell me. <laughs> short? Tell me now. What you saw? What you saw? Certain extent. Is that it? So I don't think that that's applicable to my question. I don't think maybe I'm wrong. Explain, explain it to me, Lucy. <laughs> uh, I remember so many parables of Jesus saying, like when they were saying they was casting out, he was telling them. Now she don't do blame Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm saying I, I'm answering your question. I believe no, yes. No, no, you said. The parable of Jesus did what? Well, he was telling them you can cast out too if you put your tongue. You got cast out what? I can't remember the verse, but I remember. That ain't what I asked you. I asked you about casting out money. Yes, I'm yes, talking about yes. casting out demons. Now. Ain't none of that we talk about the casting out demons. I'm just using it to validate my my yes. It ain't valid. <laughs> <laughs> you can't validate that which is not valid. Oh. <clears throat> Stupid this mess. What you say? I asked you a question with another. What's your question? No, what you Because I'm about to ask you one. No, I'm answering your question is no. I don't think we we're not powerful enough to speak and make stuff happen like God is. So that would be a no. It ain't got nothing to do with us. It's got to do with God. Jesus. Say what? He's speaking with yes. Okay. <laughs> if you're a child of God, you're supposed to be like God. You're supposed to think God's thoughts. I can't know God's thoughts unless I know God. I can't know God unless I know God's word. word. You got a clue now? Still lost. You still don't get it. With Jesus. Yeah. She's just as lost as she can. <laughs> <was. laughs> yeah, I'm lost here. <laughs> so then, in order for me to be like God, I got to think God's thoughts. I can't know God's thoughts unless I know God's word. Mm -hmm. I get God's word from who? God. Therefore, if I want to think like God or speak like God, I got to speak God's words. word. Mm -hmm. I got to speak God's word. Mm -hmm. The problem is, God is not the only one speaking to me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <coughs> hello, hello. <coughs> now you, now you know Miss Wright. Now you see, I'm coming up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to break this down. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm missing it. Well, you're in bad shape. Now you still don't get it. Huh? Come on, get it. Explain it to her, Chester. Chester got it. Now even slow as she is. The question, let's go back to the question. Because you know he liked to stir it up. What was the question? I forgot what the question was. <laughs> Speaking, can if, if you speak, does it have the same power as when God speaks? So basically having discernment of the spirit. What? Having discernment. Discernment of what? Of God speaking versus you speaking versus everybody else. Right? It's not going to be that close to that part. No. Clint, that's what you're saying. Clint. 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 
Okay. I either speak what God speaks or I speak what Satan speaks. That's your answer? So that ain't my answer, that's God's answer. Um, but, but your question. What was my question? What we speak. When we speak, uh -huh. can we create like God creates when he speaks? Now, the create wasn't in there at first. It said power. Do we have the same power? Well, you put power in there. Do we have the same power God has? Mm -hmm. when, when we speak. And you answered with, yes, if we speak What's in God's answer? word. Please. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> If I repeat what God so speaks, if we're speaking God's word, that's yes. God's word. Yes. That has power. So yes. If I speak what the devil speaks, no. that's the devil's word. That ain't God's word. Mm. It ain't got no power. Unless you talk about power to send you to hell. I'm talking about this power. I don't care what you're talking about. We talk about word. See what I'm talking about? See, now she no, might be don't, don't, don't you flip that. That's your word. That's your word. Don't flip it. I told y'all. That's your word. Tell me to flip it. No, no, no. See, that's so the problem. That we wanna, you want to so claim God. You want to say, I can repeat God's word, and I take credit for that. Well, when I repeat the devil's word, I ain't going to take credit for that. I didn't say that. Yes, what you said. Uh -huh. Wait, 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 wait. Let me back it up. I see, I I see what you're talking about. All right, let's, pre let's say it like this here. So then the only source of the words you say come from God. Never said that. That's what you're saying. I know, I know that's not true. So I then why? I need help daily. I'm confused. But, but the question, I took it into context because you said, does it have the power? So I immediately start thinking about in the Bible. I said, does your word have the same power of God's word? Yeah. I'm sticking with that. And she's still sticking with that. <laughs> Girl, your stock just went down. I, I guess I'm, I'm, it's not coming out the you way gotta, I, I'm. You got to, no, no, no. It's coming out right, but it's wrong. You got a middle block. You can't claim what God tells you when you repeat it, and then not claim what the devil tells you when you repeat that. If I repeat God, I get credit from God. If I repeat the devil, I get the devil's fruit. And when the devil tells me something, what's he trying to do? Deceive me. The devil comes, he says, I've come to steal, Kills, kill, kill, and destroy. And destroy. He only has one goal. All the devil's trying to do is mess you up. The devil ain't trying to help you. He ain't trying to create nothing through you except sin. Mm -hmm. See, and ain't no sense you sitting there talking about you just repeat God all the time. Because now you're lying in church, which is another point the devil is testing. It's a two part question. Ain't no two part question. <laughs> I didn't question. say all that now. See, that's what I'm talking about. Now, the reason why I'm not taking so much time, because there are people saying, well, you know, if you speak it, it's so. Well, what you speak it, you know. Uh, I'm going to be a millionaire. Uh, no. Is that so? No. How you know? <laughs> Cause it's that two part. Cause it may not be in God's way. Oh well, I'm not. See, I'm, I'm, I'm confused. She told me it wasn't so, and then she said it might not. If it's not in God's will, you're not going to be a billionaire. So if it is in God's will, that means you just lied. Hey, I don't know his plans. Well, why didn't you just say I'm gonna shut up? Cause I don't know nothing. I'm fucking out. <laughs> Boy, everybody should be ready. <laughs> Ooh. I already had the bad same fun this morning. <laughs> oh. Claim it, claim it, and name, name it, it and claim, claim it. it. Yes, name it and claim it. Y'all ever heard of that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the mm -hmm. good. And that's the problem with it. See, yep. Because I name it, <laughs> don't mean that I can claim it. Unless God says mm. God has the name. I can claim it. Mm -hmm. If God tells me, hey, I'm going to make you a billionaire. Mm. Huh? Mm. Huh? Yeah. Okay. That takes me to my next section. Uh, mm. <laughs> See, I thought that was the study. You missed all of the lesson. I was going to start the lesson. 
We all we all confused. No, 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 no. Just you. Oh, okay, I'm gonna stand on that. I don't care what. See, your problem is you don't want to admit you were wrong. You were wrong. You were W R O N G because you want to be right. You lost because you don't want to admit you were wrong. W R O N G. I'm asking about I'm making the wrong choice. Prophetic test. We're talking about the prophetic test tonight. God's word for your life. One night, this is Robert Morris talking. One night in 1993, God gave me a vision for ministry. He said, I want you to build a church of 30,000 people, which reaches 300,000 in Dallas, Fort Worth, Metroplex. Mm -hmm. I also want this church to reach 3 million in Texas, 30 million in America, and 300 million around the world. The next morning I was reading the Bible during my quiet time and I came across 1 Samuel chapter 11 verse 8. 1 Samuel chapter 11 verse 8. 1 Samuel chapter 11 and verse 8. What does it say? <clears throat> When Saul mustered them at Bezek, when the, Saul did what? My Bible says mustered. Mustered? M U S T E R E D. Okay. Mustered them at Bezek. This was said when Saul numbered them. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay. The men of Israel numbered 300,000, and the men of Judah, 30,000. Now, this is what Mark says. Immediately, the Lord confirmed in my heart that the dream I had the night before was from him. What's wrong? You don't see the connection. Can you read that again? Yeah. I didn't hear it. What did you not hear? <laughs> what you just read, sir? He said, as soon as he read that verse that Clint just read, okay, that was confirmation that what God had told him in the dream was from God. You see the connection? You see the connection? Okay. So if God told you what he told him, and you read verse 8 the next day, you would say, oh, that's God. That's God talking. What am I saying? I'm saying confirmation would not be confirmation for everybody. Mm -hmm. But it was confirmation for him. Yeah. Because the numbers that God had told him mm -hmm. was the same numbers he read in verse 8. Okay. Mm -hmm. So to him, that meant confirmation. Mm -hmm. Y'all feel? Yes, mm -hmm. sir. Yeah. Man got a dream. Next night, or next day, brother, he's had this quiet time. He's reading the scripture. And God leads him to this scripture. The scripture he read had what that one had did. Mm -hmm. And he says, that meant to him, it confirms that the dream was from God. Mm -hmm. Why is that important? That's important because people like us. See, I don't just have to have a thought. I need to know that the thought I have came from God. <clears throat> J. 
Joseph had a dream. The dream he had came from God. But Joseph misinterprets the dream. His misinterpretation of the dream, however, doesn't destroy the validity of the dream. Why? Because the dream came from God. Y'all follow? Mm -hmm. What are you trying to say, Haynes? I'm going somewhere. Y'all walk with me. Walk with me. Uh, Matthew. Oh, I'm sorry. Wait a minute. Let me read something else. Instantly, I remember that when we first planted the church, another church gave us $30,000. Mm. Wait, wait. Let me go back. <clears throat> Seven years later, we planted Gateway Church a few months into our flagging or pledge ministry, pledging, whatever that word is. I was having my quiet time, and I read that verse again. The Lord said to me, I'm going to remind you what I've called you to do, and I'm going to confirm these numbers to you again. That's seven years later. Mm -hmm. Seven years later. Didn't happen next day. Mm -hmm. Didn't happen the next month. Seven years later. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Instantly, I remember that when we first planted the church, another church gave us thirty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Do you see the connection? Mm -hmm. And some thirties in there, that's thirty thousand dollars. Later that same day, I had lunch with a man who had visited our church twice. And at the end of the lunch, he said, my family and I are going to join the church and we've we are excited about it. Every now and then, we have some resources we can sow into the kingdom. The Lord put an amount on my heart. I want to give the church. And he handed me a check and he said, God told me to tell you this amount is going to confirm something in you. Mm -hmm. I thanked him and told him how grateful we were. We said goodbye, and I, after that, I got into my car, reached in my pocket, and pulled out the check. And guess how much the check was for? Mm -hmm. $300,000. Mm -hmm. Do you see the connection? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> what did I say to you, Chesty? He told him to remember what he told you. In 1993, you. that's the same year I came to Dallas. Mm -hmm. 1993 is when the Lord gave me a vision for Bethany. When I first presented this building, and when it ain't up yet, church didn't want me. Mm -hmm. But the reason the building ain't here ain't because of the church. But I made some boo boos along the way. Mm -hmm. God said to me, okay, you messed up. I'm still going to build your church. But but so what? Not in time. That's right. That's rewind. Morris had a dream. 
when he had the dream, what did the dream, what did God tell him he needed to do? Open up the church in Texas, then Dallas. He said, I want you to organize a church. What else? Okay. Between what God told him at first and what happens on the end, how does it happen? He stayed, he stayed consistent in ministry. He stayed consistent? I feel like he gave the Lord for... You think so? You think that's why the building came? Because he stayed consistent? I mean, God was going to do it anyway. Really? Yeah, he told him. Really? He, he gave him the vision. Of he told me too, but I ain't got no bill. Not yet. Not yet. Mm -hmm. All right. Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. Read it for us tonight. And I tell you that you are Peter. And on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. And the gates of hell shall not prevail. Yes. I said, Thou art Peter, mm -hmm. and upon this rock I will build my church. And what did that verse tell you, Chester? Mm -hmm. God's going to build it. That Jesus, when he's talking to Peter, he said, they came to go see the real field pie, and they were trying to figure out who men said he was. Some said Jeremiah said someone on the prophet. He said, okay, who do you say I am? They stood there like some dummies, didn't know what to say. And finally, Peter said, Thou art the Christ, mm -hmm. Son of the living God. He says, Thou art Peter. Little rock, big rock, ain't got a whole lot to do with it. Because I can tell what he's actually saying, he's not going to build no church on Peter. He says, I'm going to build the church on what just transpired. There comes a time in the life of the church when the church is going to have questions that they don't have answers to. And the answers will come through the revelation of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm going to build my church on, that relationship. But the key is what she just said. He says, I will build. Mm -hmm. He didn't say Morris is going to build. Right. Mm -hmm. He didn't say Haynes was going to build. He, said he, was he says, he I. Mm -hmm. The responsibility of the church is crisis. Mm -hmm. God doesn't want to build churches. We don't build them. What verse is it? It's wake 18. up verse. Got to wake no, no, up. no. I, I got to walk on that. Okay. <laughs> 1618. Okay, I have one, so I can't do the number. That's okay, Mark. Mark. <laughs> I want you to get back up. Back. I got it. <laughs> back up, back up. Okay. When Morris received his revelation, between the time he received the revelation and the time seven years later when stuff started happening, what did he do? Read the word. Read the word. It's quiet time. <laughs> <laughs> She's so scared of what it is. She still got to worry. <laughs> she, she messed up from that first mess up. You know, that's going to be our answer there. Word. <laughs> word. 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 First, we got a 30,000 contribution from another church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did Morris do that? God did that. Okay. We got a three hundred thousand dollars from a couple. Did Morris do that? God did that. Okay. Unless you want to get in. No, but if he wasn't, if he wasn't consistent in ministry, that wouldn't have happened, though, right? Because God ain't going to give you something and you go in a different direction, right? Or, right? 
So if I was to go out here and do something completely different to God's word, do you tell me he's still going to put a million dollars in my hand and let me just, I don't think that that's, I think that he saved the course, right? He had to in order to get what God promised him, right? She keeps saying, right, right. That's what she's saying. <laughs> Keep asking me <laughs> hypotheticals. Man, right, right, right. My question is, what did Morris do to make the church happen? Obedience. I don't think he really did. He was obedient to his call that God called to his destiny. He was faithful to what God called him to do. But all God told him to do was to minister mm. in the Word. He didn't get nobody 30,000 out of He didn't get nobody 300,000 out of mm -hmm. That happened because whoever was over that church decided we got $30,000 and God has put it in my spirit Give it to Gateway Church. Mm -hmm. Y'all feel? Mm -hmm. So we made that happen. Uh -huh. God made it. God initiated it. The Gateway Church cooperated because first of all, they received the word from God to give it, and they were obedient to what God told them to give. Mm -hmm. And because they won't be in the area of God, they gave it, they contributed to the building of Gateway Church. Got $300,000. How they got $300,000? Who initiated that? God. How you gonna say that? Because he had to lay it on their heart to give it. Uh -huh. It's confirmation. And that means that God said. He said that God told me that this, this this offering will confirm something to you. To you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The fact he said that tells me he had to be talking to God. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. how God going to tell you this offering is going to confirm something if God hadn't talked to him? Mm -hmm. So then, if God told him it's going to return, confirm something, God must have also told him to give it to him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But not only did God tell him to give it to him, God, when he told him to give it to him, he heard God, he obeyed what God told him to do. Mm -hmm. And then it became confirmation after he obeyed. But the, the initiation, the one who started all was... But when God built Gateway Church, God didn't just use Mars. God used that other church. God used that couple. God had a destiny for that other church. God had a destiny for that couple. Now, it didn't happen right away. Mm -hmm. He said, the next day I was reading my quiet time, mm -hmm. and that confirmed God what God told me was true. Mm -hmm. But seven years later, mm -hmm. seven years, mm -hmm. seven years, how faithful are you to wait for seven years? Mm -hmm. How dedicated are you for seven years mm -hmm. to do what God told you to do, and you haven't seen no sign? Mm -hmm. Can you still be faithful for seven years? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, the point I'm trying to make is, is that he says, I will build. But God builds in his own time. Way, in his own time. God doesn't work according to our timetable. He works according to his timetable. But God tells Mars, I'm going to build a church. I want you to build a church. But then he got other folk to participate in the building of the church. <laughs> that Joseph had a destiny 
And God told him his destiny. He messed it up, but God told him the destiny. Look at Psalm 105. Verse 17. Read all the way through 19. He sent a man before me. Say what? He sent a man before me. Joseph, who was sold as a slave. But he heard him speak with Philip. He was laid in earth until the time that and until the time that his word came to faith. What you say? And he sent a man before them, Joseph, sold as a slave. They bruised his feet with shackles. His neck was put in irons. Till what he foretold came to pass, till the word of the Lord proved him true. The first thing I want y'all to see is that that's in Psalm 105. Mm -hmm. The story of Joseph is in Genesis. Okay. So I had a guy tell me about a story that was in Genesis, and he started telling me what it, what it didn't happen. I said, before you start trying to say what happened and what didn't happen, you need to understand the Bible is a totality. The Bible speaks as a whole. And because something occurs in one book or verse, doesn't mean that God doesn't speak to it or add to it in the later parts of the Bible. That's the first thing I want you to see. Psalm 105 speaks about Joseph that was in Genesis. Mm -hmm. Then he says, what does it say? How did it start off? He sent a man. He sent a man to who? Before him. Who are, who's them? He said, he said, Joseph is the man he sent. Yeah, but he, he said he, he sent him he before said them. Who was the them? He said they had feathers around. In other words, they had chains around his feet. Mm -hmm. When they took him, can't be the brothers. Because the brothers didn't have a chain when they took him. Okay. <laughs> Jesus ain't born yet. <laughs> but he was in the beginning. Did we just I don't want to say something like that. <laughs> Hot dog. When y'all get scared by y'all come up with some stuff, <laughs> I gotta give it to y'all. The point I'm making is mm. Joseph's mistake in Genesis mm. is he plucked what test? What test? The first test we talked about. The first test we talked about. Which test he flunked? The first test we talked about. The first test we talked about was the. Huh? Huh? Wait a moment. That's right. Let's go back. The pride the test. test. I'm wasting my time. No, no, no. Y'all know, y'all know, ain't got nothing in it. <laughs> Every test started with a P. Oh, the pride. The pride test. Yes, sir. He missed it up because he had a pride test. He thought he was caught up on the fact that they're going to bow before him. him. He thinks the dream has to do with a destiny called, called him to. So his brothers and his dad and them would worship him. When we read further on in Genesis, what does he say? When he's in Egypt and the dad is dead. They scared that they're going to kill them. Y'all meant for evil, but God made it for good. Don't, don't be scared. Chill. I ain't going to hurt y'all. Mm -hmm. What you did, you meant for evil. Mm -hmm. But God meant it for good. Mm -hmm. 
He doesn't have no retaliatory spirit. He's grown above all that mess. He's in control. That going to hurt y'all. Because you see, God just used y'all to put me in the position I'm in to be a blessing. Mm -hmm. But I'm not in this position just to bless you. I've been able to bless you know, everyone in the family. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm not just blessing you, I'm blessing the whole Now he sees his real purpose. Now he sees his real God-given destiny. Said I'll test start with a P. Yeah, with a P. Right. You don't remember that? I remember something about P. We had the palace, the palace test. The pit. The pit. Mm -hmm. The pride of the, the pit. Of the pit. <laughs> <laughs> the palace. Mm -hmm. All of these. I've just been working my little heart to death. <laughs> <laughs> they don't remember none of that. <laughs> Y'all show me like a brother feels me. The palace is when he gave us the four keys. He did it, he did it that Sunday. When I saw this verse, it jumped off. The page in me. I love looking at the original language Bible was written in, so I did so and researched the English translation for the word heard twice. In the original Hebrew, there are actually two completely different Hebrew words with two very different meanings. They are the Hebrew words Bibar, or Debar, I should say, and Emra. Emra. This verse actually says, until the time that his debar came to pass, the emra of the Lord tested him. We're still talking about 105. Until the time that his debar came to him, the emra of the Lord tested him. Now let me explain something to you about these Hebrew words. The first word, debar, is used 1,441 times in the Old Testament mm -hmm. and is the Hebrew term which frequently is translated as word. Mm -hmm. Word. Can you spell it? D-E-B-A-R. D-E-B-A-R. The word, the bar, means a matter that is spoken of. The bar. A matter that is spoken of. With this in mind, we can see that the first part of this verse is actually saying until the time came that the word was spoken over Joseph's life came to pass. The word of the Lord tested him. Now the second word, Imra, the word as I-M-R-A-H, appears only 37 times in the Old Testament. It means commandment. Mm -hmm. speech, a word, and refers to the very word of God, the little word of God. This word is not used very often in the Bible. Let me give you a few passages in which the word Emra is used. The words of the Lord are pure words, like silver tried in the furnace of earth, purified seven times. That's in Psalm 12. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is proven. He is a shield to all who trust in him. Psalm 18. Your word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. That's Psalm 119. 11. In each of these verses, Imra refers to the literal word of God. Let's also note that the word tried in Psalm 12, 6, and the word proven in Psalm 1830 can also be translated as refined, tested, or purified. So that Psalm 105, oh, excuse me, 19 is actually saying about Joseph is this, until the time that Joseph's prophetic word or spoken word came to pass, 
the literal word of God tested and refined him. Mm -hmm. The New Living Translation of this verse says, until the time came to fulfill his dream, the Lord tested Joseph's character. The verse is the synoptic of this entire book. But here's an important insight, prophetic word. Prophetic words tend to test our faith but the literal word of God, the Bible tests our character. Mm -hmm. Do y'all follow me so far? Mm -hmm. Talk about. Let's talk about prophetic word. We talk about prophecy. What are you talking about? Prophecy is not just foretelling. Prophecy, remember, is foretelling. I should have started with that. <coughs> Write that down so y'all remember. Prophecy. prophecy is not just foretelling. Prophecy is forth, F O R T H, telling. What is prophecy? Prophecy is really just repeating what God told you. Prophecy is repeating what God told you to say. So, forth telling, that's just, I just come forth repeating what God has told me. Now, what God told me can also foretell the future sometimes because that's what God does. If He told me in Haynes in 19, uh, 2030, you'll have a new church. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's foretelling, but then it's also foretelling. If he told me to say that, but then if in 2030, you got a new church, it's also foretelling the future. But before that, prophetic is not just foretelling, it's foretelling. Y'all follow? Mm -hmm. What y'all got? Y'all got something about that lesson? Yeah. <laughs> Did you get the most important one? Mm -hmm. What's the most important one? The word. <laughs> Obedience. The most important part of the lesson tonight is that God wants to build Bethany. But God ain't going to build Bethany with Rem Haynes by himself. The Bethany is going to be built. It has to be built with other participants. Mm -hmm. Guess who those participants are supposed to be? <laughs> Us. Us. In order for you to be a participant, you have to be able to hear the word of the Lord. Not the devil. God. That when God told me Bethany's destiny, he also told you your part in Bethany's destiny. He didn't tell you about pointing the finger at somebody that's talking about that, what they ought to do. He told you what you are supposed to do. A word. He gave you a word. A word. He spoke to you. A word. Y'all hear me? Mm -hmm. So that my question for the night is, what did God tell you is your part? And if you hadn't told me yet, are you tuned in to hear what he has to say? Questions, comments? Hey, wake up. She <laughs> What? <laughs> what? <laughs> if 
follow me? You understand? Mm -hmm. You follow? Me? You see what I'm coming from? Yeah. See why I had to make sure you listen to the right voice? Because the devil tell you, oh, I ain't you gonna worry about that. I ain't the Lord you talking about. <laughs> Don't worry about that. God gonna let Chastity do it all. Oh. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Chastity don't want no parts of it. <laughs> All right. Questions, comments. Who was who was Robin Morris? No, like I know he built these churches and he's a pastor or whatnot. But like I've heard of Gateway Church. When I started these series of lessons. I said I was going to use a book entitled <laughs> Dream to Destiny. I said the author of that book name was Robert Marcus. Right. But I'm asking, like, who is he in Dallas? Who is, like, I'll look it up. I'll look it up. <laughs> I, said, I, I just wanted some more background of who he was. I want like, to do a here. series of lessons. And I said in this series taken out of a book entitled Dream to Destiny. I said the author of that book named Robert Morris. You can go on YouTube. You ain't gotta do that. You can you can go on uh, Google. Yeah, you can Google Robert Morris, Dallas, Texas. And they tell you more than I can tell you. You listen every Sunday morning at 6 o'clock to 27.1. And you're here from Robert Marcus at the Gateway Church. They have services on Saturday night and several services on Sunday morning. I've never been to the church personally. I have watched on television. <laughs> you can't remember his name, but you don't pick a field. But I remember it, so that's why I was asking. Like I've heard it at church before and everything, so I just wanted to kind of get a real quick thing. <laughs> Did the Lord tell you that or the devil? <laughs> <laughs> sick report! Sick report! Uh. Said her nephew, eight, nine years old, tried to commit suicide. Mm. Well, they were able to get through stitches. He cut his arm real bad, but bleeding mm. death. Kind of before he died. That uh, Smith, what's the lady? Mary White. Yeah, Mary, Mary White. Mm. Said that. Carol said that uh, somebody in her family was saying like sick. I think, uh, I think she said she diagnosed with cancer. Or she said somebody died. I, I don't like to kill people who ain't dead yet, but anyway, pray for her family. And, and, and Red talked to you about his sister. Uh, what's the latest? Okay, she fell Sunday morning. Okay. Had to rush her to bay. She didn't fall at church? No, it was at home. A home. At the house. Okay. He told me yesterday uh, she didn't break her hip and bruised it. I may be giving more information than he wants, but he did say she's no longer going to be able to stay by herself. Okay. So he's in the So let's pray for her. She has injured herself. Yes. Mm -hmm. Or if she's incapacitated to, at this point, so let's continue. Mm. Pray for her. Anybody else? Anybody heard from Sister? I'm sorry, from Brother Evans and Sister. Mm -hmm. What about Sister Bennett? 
He's doing good. She's doing third grade now, so we found a way. Come on, Whenever she I ask. When I ask how she's doing, that's what you need to say. She's doing good. I, she, I, I, did that. I don't know what that means. Okay, well, she. <laughs> <laughs> Any other sick report? Prayer request? Oh. Wake up. Y'all give uh, old sleepyhead the, the first part of the lesson she missed. Oh, what? <laughs> Catch it online. You said it ain't going to do no good. <laughs> Tell her to go home and watch it on TV. I get, I get it from Chastity. Watch it, watch it on her. <laughs> Chastity. Chastity's the first one. Right? <laughs> Catch it on YouTube. I'm just as you paying it to you. Let's stand for our closing <laughs> prayer. Uh, Father God, we come, we thank you for another chance to come together. We thank you for the privilege to study your word. We thank you, Lord, for giving us our destinies and revealing them to us. We thank you for the gift of discernment so that we can discern your will for our lives. We thank you for your plans for Bethany and for your allowing us to participate. We thank you for every person here. and We thank you for clarity and your revealing to us your will for us doing what we need to do as it relates to our destinies. Help us, Lord, to have clarity and full discernment of your telling us what you would have us do. Pray for us to be tuned in to your spirit and to give him way and will in our minds, our hearts. We want to think like you think. We want to speak what you speak. We want to live the way you want us to live. We pray, Lord, that thou would help us to be what you call us to be. Unify us in your spirit. Unify us in your love. Help us to be walking manifestations of your word, your will, and your way. As always, we pray your blessings upon our homes. That our homes will be homes of peace and prayer and love. As we pray for Bethany, we are mindful of saints everywhere and every church that's open in your name. We pray for saints that thou would strengthen thou would encourage them the same request we made of us we ask that you would make that request or that we want to make that request for them we pray and ask these and many 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 other blessings in the magnificent mighty majestic marvelous miraculous name of jesus the christ your son and our savior and all the saints of god said amen amen, amen. amen.